Hello, future people, and welcome to Great Uncle John's Weekly Video Log. This is episode 45, November 12th, 2018. It is a crisp fall day here in the nation's capital. Sunny, a bit of snow in the ground. Uh, let's get right into Trump and the elections. As you know, the Democrats managed to score an impressive victory in the midterm elections, at least in Congress. They picked up something like 35 seats, taking control of the House of Representatives and putting a serious break on Trump. I've thought for quite some time that the American governmental system is probably the best in the world, maybe the best the world will ever see if uh, we keep going downhill. I've said before that I can envision technology replacing government and making it redundant, sort of a techno-anarchy, not chaos, but self-government through technology. Life will be sort of like a VR game where you get points in advance by doing the right thing, sort of like a, an episode of Black Mirror. Uh, but for now, messy, analog, democratic human society needs legislative bodies and laws and representatives. and. I am unaware of anything more durable and functional than the American Madisonian model. Uh, the Madisonian model, according to Google, is a structure of government in which the powers of the government are separated into three branches, executive, legislative, and judicial. Uh, and this came about because the delegates of the uh, Constitutional Convention, I guess, in the United States saw the need to structure the government in such a way to prevent the imposition of tyranny by either majority or minority. Uh, James Madison proposed this governmental scheme so that the power and influence of each branch would be balanced by those of the others and the separation of powers as a result of Congress passing laws, the President enforcing laws, and the courts interpreting the laws. The three branches of government are independent from each other, yet cooperate by necessity. And in the Federalist Papers, number 51, Madison illustrated his belief on how a balance in power was necessary for a government to even exist. Those ideas originated in the work of French philosopher Baron de Montesquieu, described, who described these concepts in his book, The Spirit of the Laws, in 1748, where Montesquieu explained how these checks on powers were efficient in preventing tyranny and that's sort of where we seem to be at right now people future people uh, Trump is sort of like Caligula he's like some rich noble and the presidency is the last toy he can buy and he has no knowledge or understanding or appreciation of the history and traditions of the presidency he has assumed he believes the simple force of his will can make anything happen and for someone who became president that's sort of hard to argue against um, except the pesky system of checks and balances. I think America and perhaps the whole world dodged a bullet with this election of the American people. And I still believe the American people have the power to dictate this stuff. If they've decided they liked what Trump stood for and where he was taking the country, I think all hell would have been unleashed uh, if, if the American voter had decided to go that direction. But uh, luckily they didn't. And uh, I guess that is the paradoxical danger of this time period. The people can still control outcomes with their votes, but they still vote for candidates who have no respect for the institutions they are elected to. The end result is the only thing that matters, and lies and cheating are okay. Uh, but they all do it, the apologists will say. And I will agree that there is a certain amount of corruption inherent in any human built system but the system of checks and balances uh, including the judiciary are designed to detect and punish that and not everyone gets caught and some corruption seems to be more endemic such as the NRA and Big Pharma and the Saudis whichever moneyed interest group you want to pick out owning the vote of an elected representative and you can see that in the Senate now as they ignore the Trump's oozing, festering presidency for their own self-interest. Uh, but in the Madisonian system, congressional representatives are chosen every two years and the population can still decide if their representative has become too corrupt uh, to represent their, their interests. But unfortunately, cynicism runs so deep that only about half the people show up to vote anyway. Yet when all is said and done, it is still in the hands of the people to demand better, most just don't seem to care, and the rest vote primarily for social issues like abortion and immigration. The details don't matter that much. 
uh, about economic policy, although for some reason poor people seem to be able to accept the Reaganomic trickle-down idea that if you cut at the top, cut taxes at the top and give the rich a break, that somehow the money's going to trickle down to them. Sort of like dogs underneath a table waiting for crumbs. Uh, but what is the alternative? Uh, do you have policy dictated by the likes of Donald Trump? I think any semblance of integrity, decency, justice, and honor would have been shredded if the American people had decided to endorse the last two years of Trump. But that didn't happen. There is now the Congress for Trump to contend with. Uh, that may be why Trump was so cranky this past week. The walls continue to close in. Mueller is writing his report. Cohen was in court and it was revealed how involved Trump was in the campaign finance violations by paying off Stormy Daniels and that other woman. And he fired Jeff, Jeff Sessions and replaced him with uh, some partisan dude, I forget his name right now, who will probably try to derail the investigation. Uh, I think that will be Trump's final move. He will flip the playing board and watch the pieces fly rather than lose. Imagine how terrifying it would be if Trump wasn't a bumbling, senile narcissist and was actually a person with a plan beyond enriching himself and his family. Uh, we just had Remembrance Day yesterday, and in Europe, the first are the world leaders gathered to remember the end of the First World War. Uh, globalism and internationalism is the big boogeyman for the modern American white nationalists, but Europeans and thankfully Canada still seems to understand that global cooperation is the only path forward and away from destruction, and it won't be trenches next time, it will be uh, nukes and chemical and biological weapons. Uh, President Emmanuel Marcon, Marcon? Marcon uh, emerged as uh, a leader of the democratic world, France's president, with his speech against nationalism in front of uh, the debased Donald Trump, who had to listen and who would not even attend a ceremony earlier because it was raining. And even our own uh, Justin Trudeau said some fine words in defense of press freedom. It's like what remains of the globalist world order is fighting back against the white Christian nationalist uprising. There is a war going on, future people, and I hope uh, that it's over for you. Uh, it is a cultural war that is seeing hundreds of thousands of people dying from opioids and regressive religious forces trying to take back uh, gains that minority groups and women and labor have fought for. And The war is for the hearts and minds of the population and a good 40% of the American electorate are okay with uh, how it was going and how, it, uh, how what Trump's vision of the world is. Um, that's 40% of the electorate, that's 40% of the 50% that voted, so that's out about 20-25% of the population likes what Trump is going for, but uh, there doesn't seem to be enough people um, motivated enough to get out to the polls to vote against that. Well, there, were, there was, though, this time around, they did squeak out a win. And there's a deep strain of racism and fear and hatred that runs through society, and I doubt it will ever go away. Um, Certainly killing Hitler didn't get rid of the Nazis, but uh, we can certainly keep a lid on them. And They have a lot of passion, and when, when it will be the side of the most apathetic that will lose, I think, ultimately, which, which side cares the least, and we know the Nazis are, uh, are motivated. So anyway, <laughs> that's, my, that's my rant for, for this week. How's it going, future people? Have we, have we managed to defeat the, the Nazis once and for all? I hope so. See ya.